Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I've got Ed from Foundry, Hello. formerly from Pixel Fondue. We are at SIGGRAPH 2018 in Ed's hotel room in the lovely city of Vancouver, as you can see. Uh, this is the convention center right on the water here. I have to say it, Vancouver is beautiful. Yeah, right? it's, it's really awesome. Never been here before. I think it's really awesome. So, look, this video is going to be kind of crazy and not the best editing you've ever seen because there's no editing at all. I just lined up all the clips I took today back to back. We'll do more tomorrow, a little bit better job, do some live streaming. But this is the convention center. Lots of people heading down to the ex uh, exhibit floor. And I think the way we're going to do this is we'll just kind of pause when we see something cool at a booth or something that I recorded, chat about it a little bit, and uh, do it that way. We're really hacking this together, but I figure at least some of you motonauts out there will find this interesting. Definitely. Is the Pixel Pub? Did you go to Pixel Pub? I didn't. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's just a refreshment stand or if it's actually uh, alcoholic. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll have to check it out tomorrow. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but the floor was pretty. Was actually really big, and it was really crowded. And uh, you know, we I went to about half the, uh, the places today. Um, sort of the major players today, and take a look, and then tomorrow, and they're going to try to get some live streaming done. We're running into Wi-Fi problems. The Wi-Fi at the uh, convention center is not so good. So we've got some mobile units, but we're not technically savvy enough to figure the, the F out. <laughs> so we will attempt to do that. This instant LOD, I didn't uh, actually talk to them at all. I had heard about them before, but I think they may have been acquired by Amazon or something. Is that like a Simplegon? Uh, kind of, uh, yeah, I think they were able to like basically automate. I'm pausing the video here, everybody, just so we can chat about this a little bit. This is how we're going to kind of do it. But I think the instant LOD was, yeah, sort of an automated process for... Uh, I think with scan data especially, so you could get a really high res scan in, and this will iterate it down to however many polygons you want. Cool. And uses some sort of machine learning, I think, of course, like everything nowadays to, yeah. <laughs> to do it. So Cinema 4D, I have to say, had a really nice uh, release with uh, 20. And this guy was out there talking about the fields, and I think they did a really good job with them. I think uh, Moto had some uh, fall-offs, you know, for a number of years now. Um, that have gotten us about two thirds of the way there in terms of what we want, but you know some of these guys they really did a great job with the fields, which were essentially like moto fall offs. They um, work with dynamics, they work with deformations, they work work with texturing, some of the fall offs in moto, uh, but you can layer them up, and so they can be additive or subtractive with each other, which I think is which is really cool. I'd really love to have that in moto. Yeah, definitely. Mario Baldi, if you're watching, I want you to program that. <laughs> we'll buy it from you. Please, Mario. So here's just having the fall off effect uh, vertex map. The vertex map is going to be piping as a mask, kind of like a layer uh, group mask uh, for shading in Moto, and, and they're using a sort of fall off to determine what that would be. And here, if you can see the uh, scary lady, she's got <laughs> some, some blue where <laughs> the uh, vertex mask is acting as a mask. Um, but cool. I actually didn't get a chance to see this, but the volume builder stuff is pretty, I caught my eye. Yeah, they got yeah. the volume builder stuff, and this stuff works really fast. Like, this uh, super interactive, like, like, like. It's super impressive, I gotta admit. Like, the Cinema 4D stuff is, you know, I'm not, and I don't use the program, you know, that's its place, but um, they did a good job with this build, in my opinion. They've got this, they've got the volume stuff with the, uh, they've got a demo online of the volume stuff, they're making a gummy bear, which I actually, that, yeah. Yeah, so I saw, I tried to, so, okay, so I went to Moto the, <laughs> before I went to Sigur I was like, I'm gonna make that gummy bear, <laughs> Mesh Fusion, and you can do it really quickly, and then actually in Moto, you can pipe the Mesh Fusion output into a VDB voxel node, oh, and it'll, cool. it'll make a mesh, uh, like a, volumetric mesh of the um, item. But again, what they're doing here with their mesh objects, their their volume objects, they're able to bully in them. They're able to add mm -hmm. them and subtract them and, and do some stuff there. But this is more the fall off stuff. So I had like a, essentially a proximity field on the particles and they would cause deformation. You can see some vertex shading and some deformation on the, on the sphere as the particles got closer to the sphere. But again, it's a it's just another fall off type. It's like a particle uh, fall off. So mm -hmm. each, each particle has like a spherical fall off around it, or field, they would call it, in Cinema 4D, but I thought that was, um, was kind of cool. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely a lot of things there that I like to see companies borrow stuff from each other. Yeah, I cranked it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's real time, so again, like, they've, they've, it's pretty fast. Like, that is really yeah, pretty so impressive. Yeah, it's a fantastic um, I talked to the Cinema 4D guys a bit, and, and uh, was going to go to their... The guy said, come by tomorrow, we can do a live stream. If we can get Wi-Fi working, we'll be there tomorrow, we'll do a live stream. Talk a little more about R20. Um, there's a few cinema people in the Moto forum who uh, use both programs, but uh, cinema is still uh, doing a decent job there. So yeah, I'm going to reach to my mouse and fast forward by Redshirt Guy, because I no longer want to see his thing. <laughs> and we're going to go, oh, oh, 
Yeah. That's Tor Frick. So I don't, he's not really, let me just uh, hit point again. So Tor um, had a great presentation at the Innovation and Modeling Conference earlier today where Ed showed off uh, FlexFuse. FlexFuse and uh, Canova's new Canova stuff. And Tor did a nice presentation um, about his techniques with fast modeling and asset creation. He's got a new company. Neon, Neon Giant. Neon Giant, yeah. So he's a founder of a new gaming company. So Tor is going to be making his own game. <laughs> and I think he is uh, having to find ways to create assets extremely fast, you know, talking to him sort of in between this stuff. You know, the guy makes mechs in a matter of hours, and he's no longer doing a sort of high-poly, low-poly game asset workflow. Right. He's just making the game asset, from, you know, the concept asset basically gets worked right into the game. And uh, he talked about that a little bit, especially the baking and routed that shader and some of the stuff that he does. Yeah, the stuff that he was showing directly in Unreal Engine was just... Uh, oh, God, yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry, I can't just really... So go to his art station page, check out his... Uh, there's an Unreal Engine video there of uh, like a futuristic cockpit. And the game mm -hmm. they're working on is a cyberpunk game, by the way. So, uh, so he didn't mention that, so I don't think I'm breaking any rules no, exactly. here. <laughs> sorry, Tor. <laughs> Tor's on a plane back to Sweden right now. I don't think he slept in like four mm -hmm. days, but uh, that dude's a machine, so... Um, yeah, his presentation was super impressive. But I, I missed yeah. it at the booth, but um, yeah, doing the innovation of modeling. Yeah, like, so those will go online in probably a week or so, a week or two. I think so. And so that was, a, that was a really good uh, seminar today. But yeah, so Tor's doing this uh, here and going through his mic building. And Tor did a little uh, mic drop during the, uh, the event. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Put a dent in the microphone, <laughs> dropping it on the floor. He's got it. Don't make Tor angry. <laughs> oh, we're talking about Unreal Engine. Yeah, so he had done this really cool thing. So go to our station and watch his Unreal Engine, Unreal 4. Thing he did with Moto, all like um, edge edge shader, right? He, does, yeah. he uses the edge uh, rounding shader on everything, both to integrate um, non boolean geometry with a smooth edge, but and create nice uh, you know, soft edges. Yeah. He bakes all that down. He has like a sort of a baking process that he uses. I honestly didn't really understand what he was doing. <laughs> He's doing something in baking uh, vertex world vertex normals, and uh, getting these uh, basically what looks like the final asset in Unreal Engine. And it looks amazing. And I, I didn't realize he'd been using Unreal for a long time. So I thought, like, dude, this guy learned Unreal now. He's doing this stuff at this level in Unreal. And he was like, yeah, I've been using that since, like, the 90s. <laughs> like, Unreal 3 or something like that. So Yeah, and real quick, uh, towards uh, Gumbo page, he has, um, uh, like, an automatic material and shading uh, in Moto. Oh, yeah. Um, so, his, like, so I can actually explain how that works. So before we get to Thread Ripper 2 here at the MD booth, um, Tor has an interesting methodology working in Moto, and anybody can do this. And basically what he'll do is he just uses the same material names for everything. So he, whatever um, aluminum, he has the exact same name and spelling of that. And so he just keeps those masks in the shader tree at all time. Mm -hmm. So any asset he brings in, it just has to have the tags on it. And it picks up those names are matched with the existing you know, masks in the shader tree. He doesn't have to bring in a bunch of materials with every single asset. In fact, if he brings in a preset that has his own materials, he can just delete them. Because it's just going to pick up, it's just matching name, you know, it's just matching right, tags right. in the shader tree. It's actually a really nice way to work in Moto, where you're not specifically, you know, making a link between, you know, like, a, a, a specific, you know, like, blend shader or something, a piece of geometry like you would in Maya. You know, it's just going up the shader tree and matching tagging item name and, and P tag name with whatever's in the scene. So, and that allows him to work really quickly, because he has a huge library of preset shaders, and then he just, he just, you know, tags everything with the same name, and they all just show up. And so yeah. his stuff is basically textured as he's modeled. That's awesome. <laughs> crazy. And he has all this cool dirt stuff he does as well. So that was really neat. Um, so I did go by the AMD booth. They had Threadripper everywhere. I got to say, like, I, ha I went ahead and bought a Threadripper this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 1950X, I think it is, the um, 30 core one or 16 core. And it, it is, it really is a, a huge game changing, I think. I don't know, game changing. It's just a. It was game changing for AMD because they went from like sucking Intel's dust for the last twenty years. Back by the time that you know, I don't know if you guys remember the Opteron. That was the last time AMD was relevant, really. Uh, but with Ryzen and the Threadripper, they really like taken it away from Intel. Like in the, in the if you look at the um, Threadripper two point there's some of the stuff they have there. That guy in the pause it. That thing's <laughs> that, that giant video card's called the Instinct. <laughs> Instinct. The yeah. Instinct. Yeah. So we'll talk about that in a second. So. Anyway, Threadripper 2, um, the embargo has been unveiled. There's some stuff you go to, like, Linus's uh, Tech Tips, or some of these you'll see some um, you'll see some benchmarking now. It's it's pretty awesome and pretty cool. cheap. And same motherboard, same uh, RAM uh, uh, capability. You know, basically, nice. you can just drop it in. Uh, probably new cooler, maybe, but it'll, it'll drop into your existing system. 
Or if you want to up, update your system like uh, Twitter for two, it's already out. So that instinct, that's just a whole new thing. So how do you right, so I, we'll go back there tomorrow, and I try, I, grab, I try to grab somebody from AMD to talk to me about the cards, but they, he didn't seem to know anything about it. Maybe he was a CPU guy right. <laughs> or something. He was like, well, that one's probably good. It's big. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> it probably is. But if I, if I back up a little bit, actually, what was interesting to me about the ones in the blue is um, they're super thin. And so whatever cooler they have on them, they're single-slot cards. Now, I wonder if those are dense for GPU mining. So you want as much density as you can get. Uh, but um, I don't really know. So we'll get a more of a lowdown there. But what was really interesting, I'll just keep on playing this now, is, is you know, obviously cryptocurrency mining has um, disrupted uh, some industries. And one of them is the 3D rendering industry because they took all the hardware. Mm -hmm. Like, it was very difficult to even buy GPU rendering hardware for a while oh. there. And, 2018 or earlier this year, and um, we've been competing with these guys for for the hardware. And here's a Radeon Pro render. This is actually in their booth, uh, running on Moto in their booth. I think um, maybe to the left there. I think I thought I had gotten it on camera. If not, we can run by tomorrow. Yeah, is that the Moto one? Oh, that's Unreal Engine. They had Unreal Engine. They had it on Moto, but they seem to be taking Radeon Pro render seriously. I mean, it's mm -hmm. featured all over their booth, and here it is. Oh, I think yeah. just in a, its own window with some benchmarking there. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this comes out. I know Shane a couple days ago had said that uh, ProRender is going to be available in beta on Moto mm -hmm. really soon here. And then I talked to these guys. Um, this is Genesis Cloud System. Remember I talked about cryptocurrency earlier. So I started talking to these guys. They had a booth here in, in, in a Radeon booth. Genesis apparently is one of the biggest cryptocurrency mining companies in the world. He's like, okay. And he's like, so we decided to do some rendering. We're making a services available for rendering. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right. And, he's, and I was like, well, I use Rebus Farm. We used to do a lot of uh, CPU rendering on Rebus, but I don't do much GPU rendering because uh, anywhere, including uh, uh, Otoys or Cloud or anything like that, because there's just not enough GPUs out there. I know some people sort of rolled their own uh, Amazon work, you know, Amazon uh, uh, Web Services GPU solutions, but for, there's not a real decent GPU cloud rendering solution out there. And so these guys are all GPU, all cloud. And so he says, okay, you use Rebus, right? So he gave me a little price list. He says they're, they're going to basically um, offer their services for half of what Rebus is, okay? Genesis Cloud is. Genesis right? Cloud. They're going to cut, <laughs> they're gonna undercut Rebus by half. Well, so I love Rebus, and so this will be interesting. I, I, I rely on Rebus a lot. I use it all the time. Yeah, I know a lot of meta users who love Rebus. I think they're great. And, um, but these guys are really going to go after them in the GPU aspect. And he's, he told me, and I don't know if this is true, because I've talked to Rebus. He said Rebus has something like 150 GPUs only on the entire farm. Sounds like a lot. And I'm going to pause and go back here a little bit. It sounds like a lot, 150 GPUs. Like, okay. And I know that has to be more than, uh, you know, Octane, Otoy has. Because Otoy, the most, you can only spend $50 a month on their rendering. Like, if I, I had an animation project I wanted to do on an Octane and Moto and, and go to Otoy, and I thought, oh, I'm doing Otoy's cloud. Like, I use Rebus's. And Otoy, like, caps your spending at 50 oh, really? bucks a month. You can only spend 50 bucks a month. So it's like a couple of still images or whatever. Well, these guys, this guy said he had a million GPUs. One, he's, I don't know what is true. He he said he, they their company has one million GPUs. So they have AMD, they have Nvidia, they have ones that I are, I think are custom built. Where are they located? Sweden. Okay. They're next to like a hydroelectric dam, so they get free electricity, and they've got all these GPUs. And I think they're just balancing their crypto mining uh, risk with GPU rendering. So Genesis Systems now. They had Blender going here. The guy, you know, I, I said, okay, I use Moto over there, the Pro Render, Maya. And he kind of said they're working on a Rebus type thing. I really stressed how important it is to be able to go to a drop down menu, just upload your scene from there. The upload speed has to be good sure. in the download speed because sometimes uh, with Rebus, one of the drawbacks of Rebus is the upload speed can be pretty slow. So if you have really big scene with a lot of textures, you know, it could take longer to upload it than actually render. Mm -hmm. But, um, did he seem receptive to that? You mentioned how he they seemed were. to get it. They seem to get it. They, you know, they have some compression uh, they do when they bring your scene in there and things like that. So we'll see. I'll keep our eye on those guys, yeah. Genesis. Maybe we'll talk to them tomorrow. A little bit. So this is just Black Magic Design. They're showcasing uh, Fusion, um, which they acquired like what, like a year ago, maybe. Yeah, a year, a year or two ago. So a lot of people have used Fusion, and of course, what Black Magic does is they acquire things like DaVinci and Fusion. They make them super cheap. But they don't stop working on them. They work on them like crazy. And so they fund uh, most of their business, I think, is video hardware. They have their own cameras, they have all kinds of cards. I, I had a Blackmagic Decklink card oh, cool. back in like 
dot com days. Oh. Like, so I've been a customer with these guys a long time. I have DaVinci at the office, at Sabretooth, and a number of their other uh, systems. Um, and their cameras are all awesome. Cool awesome cameras. Way. And so they're definitely committed. So he's doing some sort of a masking. So basically what he's doing here is he's trying to explain to the crowd the difference between node-based compositing and layer-based compositing mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of people getting into this, um, there isn't really a competitor to Nuke for node-based compositing. Yeah. And Nuke, of course, dominates um, high end compositing, always has, and they seem to be kind of staying there. There isn't really a version of Nuke necessarily right now that you would get to replace After Effects with. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're doing Nuke work, you do you know, that type of work, you use Nuke. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see where Fusion goes, in my opinion, because they've got a, Blackmagic has no shortage of funding, they seem to have no shortage of um, uh, motivation, and uh, what's the other word? Oh, there's their little panel. Were they just showing like a little uh, crypto mat type of deal um, previously? It, it looked like a type of crypto mat type thing. Uh, crypto mat, by the way, available in V-Ray for Moto now. I actually mm -hmm. did some tests with that. And um, definitely it's open source. It works with Nuke and uh, Fusion. But there is somebody, I saw somebody pop up in After Effects crypto mat oh, uh, right. uh, plugin. So mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to try that yet. Somebody out there want to give that a shot. Crypto mat is awesome. It basically makes a mask for every item and every material in your entire scene. So you can, and you just eyedropper them to create a mask. So you're a nuke, and then you have a giant scene with a tree and a dinosaur and a car, mm -hmm. and you want to like get a have a mask for the car's front left headlight. You don't have to like render that mask separately or do anything. You just eyedropper that front left headlight and tell it item mode or surface mode, and it'll just create a mask oh, for cool. you. And you can just like add to it. Well, I want to add to this mask. I want the front fender and the dinosaur's eye. Mm. And you just eyedropper this stuff and it creates a mask for you. It's nice. freaking yeah, that sounds cool. cool. And you can tweak those things like crazy. Yum, yum!